we are going to go ahead and take a look at some special trig limits that you're expected to know. Um, now, if you, uh, you know, these are the two ones we're going to look at. We're going to use these uh, in a couple problems. So, if you look at this limit right here, and you're just thinking to try and evaluate it, you know, I always recommend the first thing, always plug in. So, I plug in zero, and I get sine of zero, zero, so I get zero over zero. That tells me something. You know, in most cases, other than that absolute value of x over x case, or, you know, something similar to that, um, you can manipulate to get a, a limit, you know, or at least you can get a limit from it. Sometimes you won't be able to manipulate, like in this case. But, um, Best way that I, I don't know, to do this limit, you can use like squeeze term and other things, but what I like to do with my students is just, you know, plug it in your calculator, plug this function in y1, take a look at this, you know, and, you know, in a pretty standard window, maybe like even like, if the x's were from negative 5 to 5 and the y's were from negative 2 to 2, you'd be able to get a really good look at this graph, and uh, you can see what's going on here, and you can see that if you look at the graph, as x approaches 0, the y value is approaching 1. So there actually is a hole in the graph there, at x equals zero because you can't divide by zero, but you can tell that the limit is equal to one. So this right here is something that you are expected to commit to memory. The AP, AP peoples assume you know this. Okay. Over here you can also put that one in your calculator. You'll see that this limit, as x approaches zero, the y value looks like it's going to zero. Okay. And again, AP people expect that you know this. Okay. And again, that one will have a hole in the graph as well. For both of them, in order to see the hole in the calculator, you have to turn the axes off. But um, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. So what you can do with this, you can use these special trig limits to find other limits. So let's just look at a basic one first. How about the limit as x approaches 0 of 5 sine x over x? So in this case, you can um, essentially just, you know, manipulate how this looks, or you really wouldn't even have to manipulate how it looks too much because it's almost set up for you, but just think of it like this at least. Even if you don't manipulate it, at least this is hopefully what you think in your head, is 5 times sine x over x, because we should recognize, oh, sine x over x, that's one of those special trick limits I'm supposed to know, you know, as the limit of x approaches 0. Um, and then, so I see that there, well, the 5, you know, we can just use our scalar multiple rule, or even if you think, I mean, if you take the limit as x approaches 0 of 5, that's just a horizontal line of 5, y value is always 5. So this limit is 5, this limit is 1, just multiply them together, and you end up getting an answer of 5. So that's kind of a basic case right there, how you can you know, use that one. Here's a, another case. You can look at the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent x over x. All right, this one is not as straightforward as the previous one. It's not right away looks exactly like either one of those. But, you know, something in math that's real important is to learn how to manipulate something to get it in a form that's easy to work with or get it in a form that, you know, has something in it that you, that you know, like one of these. Now, I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, it looks more like this one than this one because I don't see any, you know, subtraction going on. So I'm thinking, okay, how can I get tangent into something like this? And you should be thinking... Well, tangent, I know, is equal to sine over cosine. So that would be a good start, because at least I get a sine in there, okay? So, so I'm going to change tangent to sine x over cosine x, all over x. All right, and now a common thing when you have a complex fraction, a good tool to use to manipulate, is to think of this. Okay, right now it's sine sine x over cosine x divided by x. Well, what if we think of it as sine x over cosine x times 1 over x? It's the same thing. To divide by x is the same thing as to multiply by 1 over x. Just think the same thing with a number, like 2. If you're dividing by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by a half. So, I'm going to take what's on top here, and I'm going to write that as sine x over cosine x, so the same thing. I didn't change anything with the top. It's still sine x over cosine x. But instead of now dividing it by x, I'm going to multiply it times 1 over x. Same thing, okay? It just looks different. Now I think, oh gosh, okay, good. I've got a sine x on top. I've got an x on bottom. I just need to switch things around a little bit in order to get this to work. So on the bottom, you know, this would be read like cosine x times x. 
Well, we're just multiplying these two things together. You know, with multiplying, it doesn't matter which order you multiply it in, it's going to be the same thing. So, I mean, if you think something simple like 2 times uh, 7, well, that's the same thing as 7 times 2. All right, so the order in which something's multiplied does not matter. So, let's see here, I'll just I'll continue this going down here now. So limit, as x approaches 0, I'm just going to switch these two. So I'll keep the sine x over there, switch the x with the cosine x on the bottom. Okay. So we have sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. And again, I just want to make, make sure we're clear. All I did was switch these two, and that's okay, because it's still, it's x times cosine x instead of being cosine x times x, but same value. Now the great thing is, I have two functions that I can find the limits of individually. And we've learned about the uh, limit properties, so then you can just multiply the individual limits together. So sine of x over x, well, from this special trig limit, I know that that is 1 as x approaches 0. For 1 over cosine x, I can just use my plugging in method to that. So if I plug 0 in for cosine uh, of x, um, cosine of 0 is just 1. So I'll get 1 over 1. So this limit here is 1. So overall, the limit is just 1. So I start with something, manipulate it to get it into a form that I could use one of these special trig limits along with, of course, just another basic limit, and figure the answer out. All right, let's look at one last one here real quick. So limit is x approaches 0 of sine x minus sine x cosine x over x squared. Okay, so when I look at this one, and again, you know, as you do more and more of these, you'll start to learn how to manipulate things, not only with this type of problem, but other ones as well. I look at this one, and I notice we have a subtraction going on. So, okay, that's a giveaway that there probably is that cosine one involved there. Also, a good thing to notice is that the sine of x is in both of these terms. So, you know, factoring something out is usually a pretty good way to go. So let's try that. Let's see what happens when we factor out sine of x on top. So I have sine of x. If I factor that out from here, I'm just left with 1 minus. When I factor that out from here, I'm just left with cosine all over x squared. But notice, I see here, wow, I have a sine x right here on top. I have a 1 minus cosine x on top. What if I, instead of writing x squared, I write it as x times x? x times x is the same thing as x squared. But here, if I put the x under sine, here I put the x under this 1 minus cosine x. Again, x squared, x times x, same thing. Put a dot in the middle for times if you want. It's up to you. But now I look and I say, wow, look at right here. I see that right there. So I know the limit is x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. So this portion of it is 1. This portion of it right here, I see right here, that limit is x approaches 0 is just 0. So overall, this limit is just equal to 0.